Hello there! In this video I will lay out the story of the Star Fox 64 continuity. As of now, this timeline consists of Star Fox 64 3D, Star Fox Adventures, Star Fox Assault, Star Fox Command, in that order. This video will treat a particular route of 64 3D as canon that leads to the most complete ending as two matches against Star Wolf to be consistent with their dialogue. I am also aware that there are some doubts around the canonicity of Command due to a certain developer comment and the game's story being commonly seen as subpar. However, it was slightly referenced through retcons in Star Fox 64 3D, it references the stories of all previous games, there are no big contradictions and I want to include it for the sake of completeness. Now, since we have a lot to cover, I want to keep this introduction brief. So without further ado, let's get started. The Lilith System The Lilith System is one of many solar systems found in the cosmos. This system was named for its star, Lilith, and was home to a large number of varied planets. The most ancient of these was Soria, located at the edge of the system. This world housed various biomes, unlike most other planets in the system, and was inhabited by various tribes of dinosaurs and mammoths. These tribes included the hardy earthwalkers, the thorn tails, the tiny and fast lightfoot, the flying cloud runners, the large but unintelligent high tops, the carnivorous red eyes, and the woolly snow horns. Millions of years ago, Soria also had two moons, but one of them crashed into the planet. This crash created the area later called the Moon Mountain Pass, and gave rise to a new mutant dinosaur tribe known as the Sharp Claw. In time, the various tribes of Soria developed settlements, cultures and a mutual hierarchy. The Earthwalkers came to live in a walled city with many temples and underground complexes. The Earthwalkers also sealed the Red Eye tribe under their city at some point, likely to curb their hunger for the other dinosaur tribes. The Thorn Tails came to live in the cozy village of Thorn Tail Hollow at the base of Ice Mountain. Their village was also located near the Warp Stone a stone creature that could warp beings to various places on Soria. Likely because of this ability, the Thorn Tails revert the Warp Stone and often brought him gifts in the form of rock candies to sustain him, though this ceased about a millennia ago. The Lightfoots developed into spiritual beings that were also quite reclusive, keeping themselves mostly isolated to Lightfoot's village, which was located in Soria's swamps behind a tall wall. They were also a harsh tribe, as one had to complete tests to be accepted into their tribe, and they sacrificed those who slighted them. The Cloudrunners developed to be a proud race who lived in Cloudrunner Fortress, which stood on the ground rich with gold and diamonds, making the tribe quite rich, where the people of Soria most commonly traded with scarabs indigenous to the planet. The fortress also looked over a large cliff, and possessed subterranean cells. The High Tops, one of the rarer tribes, lived in various places and developed to be quite easy going. Finally, the Snowhorns lived in the cold land of the Snowhorn Wastes. In this harsh environment, they developed strength and endurance. It was at some point decided that the Earthwalkers and Cloudrunners would be the ruling tribes of Soria, perhaps due to the Earthwalkers' efforts in sealing the Red Eyes away and the Cloudrunners' wealth. The tribes did not always see eye to eye, however, and they had a mutual distaste for each other. The Sharp Claw were rejected as a ruling tribe in this time also, so instead they resorted to piracy and attacking the other tribes from time to time, though the Earthwalkers kept them at bay. Aside from these many tribes, Soria was also inhabited by mystical spirits, known as the Krazoa, who could control dark matter and who lived in the Krazoa Palace. A million years ago, they had to deal with the crisis, as Soria was tearing itself apart due to its own innate dark magical energy. To stop it, the Krazoa created four spellstones from dark matter in various lands, Dark Ice Mines, Cloudrunner Fortress, the Walled City, and Dragon Rock. These stones were capable of absorbing the energy of the planet, and so kept it from destroying itself. Two Force Point temples were then built to house the stones. One inside a volcano at the Moon Mountain Pass, and one near the beach called Cape Claw. 
four guardians called gatekeepers were also appointed to protect the spell stones, each connected to one land of which the stones were originally forged. Likely due to these events, the various tribes of Soria began to refer to Krazoa and their palace came to be considered one of the holiest places on the planet. The rest of the Lilith system's people were divided amongst various races, including avians, cats, dogs, foxes, frogs, lizards, monkeys, panthers, pigs, rabbits, tanukis, and wolves. These people had attained spaceflight and so had settled some planets in the Lilith system. The most prominent of these planets was Corneria, the fourth planet of the system. This planet was lush and green, boasting oceans, mountain ranges and many advanced cities as well. Its most significant settlement was its capital city, which acted as the center of the Lilat system and housed the Cornerian government. Corneria was also the home of the Cornerian army, also known as the Defense Force or Air Force, that was in charge of protecting the Lilat system from threats to the peace. This army was led by a single general, and its soldiers were trained at the Cornerian Academy to become pilots, with most of them being dogs. The vehicles of the Cornerian army were designed and supplied by the Space Dynamics Corporation, that was led by President Yaru Depom. Aside from Corneria, the Lilith system housed four other main planets. The first of these was Venom, located on the opposite side of the Lilith system relative to Corneria. This planet was a harsh, barren wasteland that held acidic seas in which few living creatures could survive. Its land had been inhabited at some point, however, as evidenced by the many ruined structures on the surface. The second planet of the Lilith system was Titania, a scorching desert planet on which only wild creatures lived, though there was also evidence of ancient civilizations through ruins. The third planet of the system was Macbeth, another barren world. The fifth main planet, finally, Fortuna, was a lush forest world that was considered wild. The Lilith system also held within its edges several other planets, which were either uninhabited or held settlements connected to Corneria. Aquas, Fishina, Catina, Papatoon, Solar, and Zones. Aquas was an ocean planet whose inhabitants lived in underwater cities and whose surface possessed ruins that were evidence of ancient civilization. Vishina, on the other hand, was a frozen wasteland and was uninhabited, save for a defense base of the Cornerian army, which worked to transform the icy world into a habitable one. Cartina was another world where the Cornerian army had a presence, as it had constructed several bases on this arid planet that had mostly fungi as vegetation. Citizens also inhabited this planet. Papatoon was a remote world on the edge of the Lilith system that was also inhabited. Solar was a planet located in the middle of the Lilith system that consisted of pure magma and was as such very similar to a star, though it was considered a planet. Finally, Zones was an oceanic planet that was known as somewhat of a vacation world. Lastly, the Lilith system held some features other than planets within its boundaries. Corneria was surrounded by an asteroid belt, known as Meteo, that acted as a natural defense for the planet, as Meteo lay between Corneria and the other planets of the system. Three nebulae were also located in the Lilith system, known as sectors X, Y and Z, because they were shaped like the respective letters. For many years, the Lilith system was peaceful and prosperous. It was during this peace that the Cornerian army was led by General Pepper, had a colleague in Dr. Andros the chief scientist of Corneria. Around this time also, the Cornerian soldiers James McLeod and Peppy Hare founded the Star Fox mercenary team along with Pigma Dengar. James was from Papatoon and had a son, Fox McLeod, who was studying in the Cornerian Academy at this time along with his childhood friend Brill Gray to become a pilot. Peppy had a wife, Vivian, who at some point passed away due to illness, and a daughter, Lucy. Lucy was friends with Fox and Slippy Toad, the son of the scientist Beltino Toad from Space Dynamics. The Star Fox team flew an R-Wings, developed by Space Dynamics, and used the Dreadnought class Great Fox as their flagship and hangar for their R-Wings. Despite the peace, there was a glimpse of one threat several years before the outbreak of the Lilith Wars. This threat consisted of the Aperoids, a race of cybernetic insect-like beings that lived under a single hive mind. 
They were from a world far outside the Lilat system, which had been significantly hollowed out by them. Approximately half of this world's surface was also covered in mechanical structures created by the Aperoids. Inside the Aperoid homeworld lived their queen, who was one of the two Aperoid types that could reproduce, along with Aperoid hatchers. The Aperoids saw themselves as perfect because they could possess all knowledge and wanted to spread their truth to all other beings of the universe to live as one. They could do this because they were capable of assimilating machines and living beings into their collective via infection. Eight years before the outbreak of the Lilith Wars, a fleet of the Cornarian army encountered a single Aperoid, which subsequently laid the fleet to waste. Despite this, the Aperoids did not pursue an invasion of the Lilith system further at this time, so disaster was narrowly averted and peace continued to reign in the Lilith system, but this soon changed due to the efforts of Andros. He was mainly interested in developing biotechnology, though this research was not needed due to it being peacetime. He also did not get along with General Pepper, and they fought frequently. This came to a head after Andros's mental state deteriorated, prompting him to unleash a weapon he had secretly developed on the citizens of Corneria. Several Cornerian cities were subsequently laid to waste, turning the planet into a wasteland of near extinction. General Pepper eventually managed to capture Andros, however, and he was exiled to Venom after being charged with treason. The Lilat Wars During his exile, Andros desired to make Venom a lush and green planet for his grandchildren and to leave a legacy. To do this, he created a device that could neutralize the planet's acidic seas. He hid the device in the ruins on Titania and created four massive bioweapons to protect it, as well as a sentient hologram to control them. As the years progressed, however, he started to plot to take over Corneria and the Lilat system, because he thought he was the only one who had the brains to do so. He continued his research into biotechnology, focusing specifically on bioweapons. He eventually developed one that allowed him to evolve, transforming him into a giant floating head that controlled two disembodied hands. He also could use it to seize control of localized life forms by putting his DNA in them. This caused certain fish species in the Venomous Sea to start evolving as time went on. Andros eventually also secretly amassed followers who referred him as an emperor, though most of them were thugs in it for the money, and they consisted mostly of monkeys and lizards. With these followers, Andros began to build up his forces in the form of a space fleet consisting of many different types of ships, including heavy cruisers and smaller attack fighters. Land-based mechas were also developed. These developments did not go unnoticed by Corneria, however, as an observation station picked up activity from Venom. In response, General Pepper sent Team Starfox to investigate. The team thus made its way there, but once there, Pigma betrayed the team due to his greed, and so James and Peppy were captured. James died in this encounter, whose spirit continued to linger on Venom, and Peppy managed to narrowly escape. Pigma, meanwhile, joined the ranks of Star Wolf a criminal mercenary team led by Wolf O'Donnell and employed by Andros. Other members of this team were Leon Kowalski and Andrew Oikoni, the latter being Andros' nephew. They piloted aircrafts known as Wolfen, which resembled more advanced Arlings. Once he had escaped, Peppy went to Papatoon and informed Fox about the fate of James. In the next years, Fox would become the leader of a second Star Fox team. Fox's friends Falco Lombardi, a skilled gang pilot, and Slippy, a skilled mechanic but poor pilot, joined this team. Peppy also remained part of the second Star Fox team, acting as a mentor to the other members. They inherited the great Fox and Arwings from the previous team. The team also possessed the Landmaster, an anti-aircraft tank for ground missions, and the Blue Marine, a submarine for underwater missions. Great Fox also came with the robot Rob64, who supported the team from the flagship. In these years, Andros continued to build up his forces. Planetary defenses were erected around Venom, including the Bulls defense satellite and a large defense fleet in an area known as Area 6. Andros's army also came to be stationed in Zector Z, which was located near Venom. When the preparations were complete, Andros started launching waves of attack fighters from Venom to the Lilat system. The Venomium forces managed to invade many of the planets of the system, 
occupying them as they went. They established a supply base on Macbeth, turned Zonas into a toxic wasteland by polluting its oceans, and deployed a research submarine called the Saru Marine there, deployed the large clan bioweapon Bakun on Aquas, and deployed the bioweapon Vulcan on Solar. Sector X also functioned as a similar testing ground to Aquas and Solar, as the Venomian forces used it to create Spyborg, a robot built for space combat. The robot eventually went berserk, however, tearing through the Venomian forces in Sector X. While all of this was going on, the Corneria army retaliated, though the Venomians had already started encroaching on Corneria at this time. They were namely busy heading through Meteo, likely by destroying its many meteors with the Meteo Crusher. The Venomian and Corneria forces also fought against each other at Sector Y, area near Corneria, and for control of Cantina. This last offensive was led by Bill, on the Cornerian side. The Venomians in turn used a large flying assault fortress called the Sorcerer in this battle. The Battle of Sector Y, the Venomians tested their experimental Shogun robots, which were fitted for space combat. The Cornerians started to lose the war, as the Venomians reached Corneria and started to take the war there. Seeing that his forces were outgunned, General Pepper called for Star Fox's aid and so the Great Fox headed for Corneria. There, the four members of the team engaged the Venomians at the former army base and drove them off the planet after defeating their commander, Granga, in his mech. Star Fox then moved on to Meteo, where the team defeated the Venomian forces and destroyed the Meteo Crusher. Next, the team headed for Fishina, where it was tasked by General Pepper to retake a base on the planet. Star Fox started to engage the Venomians, but in the middle of the fight, enemy planted a bomb in the base. This moment, Star Wolf also appeared and engaged the Star Fox team. They fought bitterly, but in the end, Star Wolf was defeated and Fox took the care of the bomb. Members of Star Wolf were badly wounded and retreated to Venom. There they were given improved Wolf on 2s and their injuries were treated. Meanwhile, Star Fox proceeded over Solar and defeated Vulcan there before moving on to Macbeth. The plan was to take out the enemy base, for which the Landmaster was deployed. Fox controlled it, while Star Fox's other members acted as air support from their R wings. They targeted the Forever Train that was bringing supplies to the Phenomenon base on the planet and fought against the experimental weapon connected to the train, Mechbed. Star Fox managed to reroute the train into the supply base at the last second. This destroyed the base and the train, damaging the Venomian presence on Macbeth significantly. With the fall of the planet, Venom itself was in reach for Star Fox, and so the team proceeded through the defensive line stationed in Area 6. Its members cut through the first line and then defeated the ultimate space weapon of the Venomians, Gorgon. This opened the path to Venom fully, where Star Wolf engaged Star Fox once more. The criminal mercenaries were defeated again, after which Fox proceeded into Venom's interior alone. He traversed the underground corridors of the planet, as Andros taunted him, eventually came face to face with the mad scientist. Fox took him out by shooting at his hands and eyes, through which his true form was revealed, a giant floating brain. Fox eventually defeated this form of Andros as well. Upon his defeat however, Andros intended to take Fox down with him and started a self-destruct protocol for Venom's underground facilities. Fox managed to leave the underground in time, however, because he was guided by the specter of his late father. With the defeat of Andros and the destruction of the base on Venom, the Venomians had lost and the Lilith Wars came to a close. Star Fox headed back for Corneria and its members were congratulated by General Pepper at the base of the Cornerian army. He offered the mercenaries to become part of the army, but Fox declined as Rob64 informed them that the Great Fox was ready to depart. Star Fox then left Corneria, presumably to look for a new mission. Some of Andros' followers and Star Wolf remained after the war, though they were scattered since Venom was deemed a quarantined planet. Notably, a number of them gathered at the Sargasso Space Zone colony, hidden in Meteo under the leadership of Wolf. Andros himself also survived, though this was not known by his followers, and bided his time in the shadows. Venom itself was abandoned due to its quarantine status and the frequent patrols carried out by the Cornerian army there. Flight of Soria In the years after the Lilith Wars, peace returned to the Lilith system. In this time, an orbital gate was built above Corneria, 
that could open portals to specified locations. Cornerian army also managed to build a climate control center on Vicina, which made the planet inhabitable, and so people came to live there, including Lucy. Star Fox, meanwhile, spent its time patrolling the system for threats. But because it was peacetime, there was little to do. Boredom struck, causing Falco to leave after several years had passed to start a more free and profitable life. Peppy and Slippy gave up the pilot life. Slippy focused more on weapons R&D, while Peppy retired due to his old age, acting instead as a navigator and advisor. Rob 64 was rebuilt several times by Slippy in this time, causing him to gain much more personality and to become recognized as a full member of the Star Fox team. As the years went on, however, fun started to run dry due to a lack of mercenary work, and the Great Fox and R Wings slowly fell into disrepair. Eight years after the end of the Lilith Wars, trouble started to stir once more. Andros had learned of the Krazoa spirit of Soria and wanted to use their power to revive himself. He thus lent his strength to General Skills, incumbent and self appointed leader of the Shark Claw. And with his newfound power, the general managed to invade the Krozoa Palace. Skills wanted to rule over all the dinosaur tribes of Soria with fear to keep them from fighting against the Shark Claw, and so intended to take the power of the Krozoa. However, King Earthwalker sent an Earthwalker army to the palace in response, and they gathered the six Krozoa spirits. The spirits were subsequently sealed in the six Krozoa shrines by the Earthwalkers, and only those who were pure of heart and were able to clear the respective tests of the shrine would be able to retrieve the spirits. The Earthwalkers could do little more however, as they were massacred by the Sharp Claw, so they sent out a distress signal. The signal was picked up by Crystal, a survivor of the planet Serenia, who was looking for the truth behind her planet's doom. Being kind-hearted, she headed to Soria and was aided by a Cloudrunner once there. This Cloudrunner started bringing her to the Krazoa Palace, but they were intercepted by the Galleon, the personal ship of General Scales. She defeated it in combat and then boarded it, but Scales confronted her and pushed her off his ship. The Cloudrunner intercepted Crystal and resumed its course to Krazoa Palace, though Crystal lost her staff she used for combat. At the palace, Crystal came across the remnants of the Earthwalker army and also managed to retrieve a Krazoa spirit. She returned it to a statue in the palace so its power could be of use. Due to Andros's intervention, she was sealed inside a crystal at the top of the palace. After all this passed, General Skills used his newfound power to remove the four spell stones from the Force Point temples, causing the lands of which the stones were originally forged to be expelled from Soria. As all of this was happening, the Sharp Claw also overran the surface of Soria attacking the other dinosaur tribes and returning the spellstones to their original lands by abusing the power of their respective gatekeepers. Belina Tay, daughter of Gurunda Tay, the gatekeeper of Dark Ice Mines, agreed to open the way to the mines in exchange for the safety of the Snowhorn. Most of the Snowhorns were subsequently imprisoned and forced to work in the mines. Queen Cloudrunner, the gatekeeper of Cloudrunner Fortress, was imprisoned at Cape Claw and her powers were abused to open the way to the fortress. King Earthwalker, the gatekeeper of the walled city, remained in the city as it was sent into space, but sealed his gatekeeper powers behind a door in Corntail Hollow. The final gatekeeper, a Corntail, tried to launch a rebellion against General Skills, but failed, and three of his closest friends were imprisoned on Dragon Rock as a result. The Sharp Claw planned to use Cloud from the Fortress as a ruling palace, transformed Dragon Rock into an inhospitable wasteland and released the Red Eye tribe into the Walled City. Sharp Claw also dealt with Queen Earthwalker and her son Tricky, both of whom were outside of the Walled City when it went up. The Queen was sealed in Thorn Trail Hollow and Tricky was imprisoned on Ice Mountain. Before long, Corneria caught wind of these events and because of it, General Pepper ordered Star Fox to deal with the situation. They were to restore Soria and seek contact with Queen Earthwalker on the surface. Because they were in dire need of money, Star Fox accepted this mission. Fox went to Soria alone in his R-Wing, because he was the only pilot of the team at this time. He landed in Thorntail Hollow and communicated with the local dinosaurs. He received help from Slippy in doing so, 
As some of the people of Soria spoke a different language than the rest of the Lilith system. In Thorntail Hollow, Fox found Crystal's staff and received the message that Crystal had left behind when he did so. It explained that she was in danger and how to use the staff in general. Fox then used it to defeat the shark claw lurking in the village and to open the door that blocked away Queen Earthwalker. She was in bad shape however and told Fox to go to the warp stone which she revived after giving it a piece of rock candy from the local store. The warp stone warped Fox to Ice Mountain, where he rescued Prince Tricky from the Sharp Claw. The prince accompanied Fox on his way down the mountain, through the Snowhorn Waste and to Thorntail Hollow. To heal the queen, Fox collected some white corrupted up fungi from the depths of the nearby ancient well and fed them to her. She then filled in Fox on the situation and asked him to retrieve the spell stones. He agreed to this and, together with Tricky, started to work towards this. Slippy had also finished a translator device earlier, so Fox could communicate with all inhabitants of Soria by himself. During the remainder of this mission, Slippy, Peppy and General Pepper remained in communications with Fox, which provided him with different types of intel. Fox also had to gather scattered fuel cells for his R-Wing to reach the separated lands due to its fuel supply being low. Since the spell stones had each been brought to the lands that had been separated from Soria, Fox and Tricky had to find the gatekeepers of each land so they could open vortices to them. First, Fox and Tricky found the gatekeeper Gahunda Te in the Snowhorn Wastes and went to Dark Ice Mines. Inside, Fox fought the creature Galdon and retrieved the spell stone afterwards, which also ensured the safety of the Snowhorn inside the mines including Belina Te. She was still at odds with her father, but she vowed to make up with her father so they could unite against Scales. Fox and Tricky then headed through Moon Mountain Pass to reach the Volcano Force Point Temple to return the Spellstone, defeating Sharp Claws at the Guard Outpost along the way. On their way back, the Krozoa spirit that Crystal had rescued appeared before the two of them and told them to release the other Krozoa spirits in order to save the life of the captive Crystal. Although Fox was reluctant about this at first, he agreed to do it in the end. Tricky and Fox next retrieved a Krozoa spirit from Moon Mountain Pass. After that, they rescued the captive Queen Cloudrunner from Cape Claw and Fox entered Cloudrunner Fortress. He was captured by the Sharp Claw, however, but managed to escape after Slippy sent him a Sharp Claw Disguise ability. Eventually he also retrieved the second Spellstone from some Sharp Claw after aiding Queen Cloudrunner in retrieving her children and brought it back to the Ocean Force Point Temple afterwards, with Tricky. On the way back to Thorntail Hollow, Fox was ambushed by the Lightfoot, because he had found a gem of theirs earlier to open the way to the Force Point Temple. They believed Fox had stolen the gem and wanted to put him to death over it, though Fox managed to escape with the help of a Cloudrunner. The misunderstanding was cleared up afterwards, but Fox and Tricky stayed in the village because it was built on top of a Krazoa shrine, Chief Lightfoot was willing to let Fox enter the shrine, but he first needed to complete the necessary trials to do so. Fox did this and then retrieved the second Krazoa spirit. After this, Fox and Tricky learned that the gatekeeper of the walled city was King Earthwalker from Queen Earthwalker. The king was inside the city however, so they had no way of reaching him. Fox did manage to open the seal on his gatekeeper powers with Crystal's staff however as he had upgraded its magical abilities several times during his mission so far at underground shrines in Soria. The release of the seal opened the way to the walled city, where Fox and Tricky thus headed. In the city they defeated the red eyes that ran amok and retrieved sacred teeth of two statues that opened the way to the depths of the city, for it was here that the spellstone rested. It had been embedded in the forehead of King Red Eye, who Fox defeated in combat to obtain it. King Tricky then returned the Spellstone to the Volcano Force Point Temple and rescued a Krozoa spirit from a shrine in the Snowhorn Wastes. After that was done, the gatekeeper of Dragon Rock was quickly found at Thorntail Hollow. He asked Fox to rescue his three friends and opened the way to the final land. Once there, the three friends, an Earthwalker, High Top and a Cloudrunner, the same one who had brought Crystal to Krozoa Palace, were freed from their imprisonment. They aided Fox and Trick in reaching the Guardian of the Spellstone. This was a dragon-like creature called Drakor, which was created through mutation by General Scales. 
was defeated by Fox, after which the final spellstone was returned to the Ocean Point Force Temple. Fox then retrieved the fifth Krazoa spirit from the Walled City and said goodbye to Tricky, who had been granted a honorary membership of the Star Fox team for his contributions to the mission. Fox then headed for Krazoa Palace to obtain the final Krazoa spirit. It was held by General Skills, so Fox confronted him inside the final Krazoa shrine. However, as they were about to fight, Andros intervened. He proclaimed that Skills was no longer of use to him, as all the other Krazoa spirits had been gathered, and demanded he hand over the final spirit to Fox. He in turn released it to the temple, having released the other ones earlier, and this allowed Crystal to be freed from her imprisonment. With the power of the Krazoa spirits in his grasp, however, Andros obtained their power, because Crystal was able to channel it and revived himself with the body for his brain in the form of a Krazoa statue. He also retreated from Soria into space, intending to lay waste to the Lilith system. Fox followed him in his arrowing and engaged him in battle, during which Falco suddenly returned to aid Fox. Together they defeated Andros once more, and so the crisis on Soria ended, as the Krazoa spirits returned to Soria and ensured the planet became whole again. General Scales had died when he had given up the final Krazoa spirit, and after Soria was restored, the Sharpclaw celebrated his death, presumably becoming a peaceful tribe afterwards. The mission came to a close with this, and General Pepper paid the Star Fox team for their hard work. Falco rejoined the team afterwards, and Crystal came to die to say thanks to Fox, who had become smitten with her. In time, she joined the Star Fox team as well. Aperoid Invasion With the money they gained from the mission on Soria, and due to having gained two new members, the Star Fox team was revitalized. The money was used to refurbish the Great Fox and the team's various other vehicles, such as the Arwings and the Landmaster. The Arwings were given more firepower, and the new Landmaster design was lighter than before. Slippy also took up flying once more, and Crystal acted as the telepath of the team, using her extra sensory perception to foresee danger. In this time also, a campaign to develop on Soria was started in Corneria, as well as a campaign to clean up Zones, presumably to return it to its state from before the Lilith Wars. About a year after the crisis on Soria, Wolf reorganized his team. Pigma was kicked out of the team due to his overwhelming greed and unreliability, and the flirt panther Carrosso became a member instead. Pigma became an independent criminal afterwards, and started building his own base in Meteo. Andrew Oikoni was also kicked out of Star Wolf, after which he gathered the remnants of the Venomian forces that were loyal to his late uncle Andros and established a base of operations on Fortuna. They built up their forces there, constructing new ships and a flagship for Andrew himself, that could turn into a robot modeled after Andros himself. After building his power enough, Andrew started a rebellion against Corneria. His fleet confronted the Corneria army in orbit above Fortuna, and was quickly broken apart. However, due to guerrilla tactics and the deployment of a cloaked stealth squadron, the battle turned in Andrew's favor. To deal with this, General Pepper asked Peppy for help, and so Team Star Fox was sent through the orbital gate to Fortuna to deal with the situation. They were specifically ordered to take down Andrew's flagship. The Arwings of Star Fox quickly plowed through the defensive lines of Andrew's army, also took down some ships of the stealth squadron. After the final defensive line had been breached, and Andrew's flagship came into view, he fled to the surface of Fortuna. Star Fox pursued him to Fortuna, and started to search for his flagship, tearing through the forces on the surface and their base as they did so. After the base had been breached, Andrew revealed himself again, and Fox defeated his flagship's Andrew's form. When the flagship had been weakened, Andrew started gloating that things were not over yet. But it was at that moment his ship was shot down by an aperoid. The aperoid then turned its sights on Star Fox, but was defeated and destroyed. This revealed a core memory of the creature, which Fox had to grab a hold of according to Peppy. He did so and then the team fled, as a swarm of aperoids was readily approaching. This was the start of an all-out invasion of the Lilith system by the aperoids, who started invading Cantina and several other planets after attacking Fortuna. Pepper informed the Star Fox team of this, and then gave the word to Beltino Toad, who had recently been promoted to Corneria Army's research director. He explained the Army's previous encounter with the Aperoids before the Lilith Wars, 
After which he asked Team Star Fox to retrieve a more complete core memory from an aperoid to deal with the crisis. The plan was to head to Katina to deal with the attack there, with Fox fighting the aperoids on the ground, while the rest of the team acted as air support. This was in response to a distress signal of unknown origin. Fox started to fight the aperoids on foot and then in a landmaster in the middle of a Corneria army base after he arrived. Prevailed, even after the aperoids deployed hatchers. Eventually, a large aperoid acting as the leader of the Katina invasion appeared and Fox fought it as well. It also possessed a complete core memory that Fox was able to expose. It was stolen by Pigma, who had been hiding in the base and was the one who had sent out the distress signal. Pigma fled, and the great Fox tracked him on the radar. Seeing he fled to the Sargasso space zone in Meteo, Team Star Fox followed him there, but did not find him, and instead came into conflict with the Venomians who had gathered under Star Wolf. The ruffians started initiating transfer gateways to fly their ships out of the colony. To deal with this, Fox and Slippy went inside the colony to take out the gateways, while Falco and Crystal dealt with the ruffians outside the colony. Fox and Slippy were eventually successful in taking out the transfer gateway, dealing with the ruffians inside, but just then Star Wolf showed up. Wolf was not happy that Star Fox had invaded his territory, and so started a space fight against its members due to not getting an apology. Fox and Slippy returned to their R wings due to this, and helped Falco and Crystal to defeat Star Wolf. They were defeated, after which Panther told Star Fox that Pigma had likely gone to Vishina. Once on Vishina, it was discovered the climate control center had been taken out by Pigma, causing blizzards to once again raise the planet. Fox went to the surface to restore the power generator of the climate control center, but it turned out that a shield had been erected around it. Fox thus took out the shield's generator in a landmaster and put the climate control generator back online. This caused the defense systems of the center to kick in, however, and Fox was locked in. He held off the security bots until Falco swooped in and picked up Fox. After which they and Slippy fought off more bots outside the climate control center. Slippy then discovered that the bots had been taken over by the aperoids, and Pigma revealed he had engineered this plan. He also revealed that the part of the engineering near the climate control center had become an aperoid, and the generator started to overload as well, and would explode soon. Fox took out the large aperoid in his R wing and restored the generator afterwards, but Pigma had fled to his base in the meantime. There, he was infected by the aperoids and fused with his base to become a single being. Star Wolf found him and tried to take him out, but they were defeated instead and had to abandon ship. Star Fox soon found Pigma as well, for chasing him to the meteor and through his base. He fully fused with the base at that point and fought against Star Fox, but was defeated, though not fully destroyed. With that, the core memory that contained the location of the aperoid homeworld had at last been retrieved. After General Pepper had been informed of the core memory's retrieval, Team Star Fox received a distress signal from Soria. The aperoids had launched a full invasion of the planet, causing many of the dinosaurs to be infected and the sharp claw to be wiped out. The team responded immediately, with Falco and Slippy fighting the aperoids in the sky and Crystal and Fox on the surface. The battle was fought in the walled city of the Earthwalkers, where Fox and Crystal focused on taking out the aperoid hatchers that were creating the troops. Once that was done, the aperoids on Soria were quickly dispatched, and the planet was left in the care of Tricky, who had grown considerably in the past year. However, while Team Star Fox was on Soria, the aperoids had invaded Corneria with a massive armada. Most of the Cornerian defense fleet was decimated and assimilated in the subsequent attack, with the capital being hit hard as well. General Pepper relayed this to Star Fox, it was cut off due to electromagnetic barrier devices and radar jammers made by the aperoids. Star Fox thus returned to Corneria, Fox taking to the ground to take out the jamming devices, the other members fighting the aperoids in the sky. When the jamming devices were taken out and Fox headed to his R wing, he was suddenly surrounded by aperoids. Star Wolf then appeared and saved Fox, with Fox ending up in Wolf's own Wolfen. He blasted aperoids from that ship and eventually they were driven off. General Pepper's flagship appeared however, and, as it was infected by the aperoids, started to attack. Pepper was still somewhat cognizant and asked Fox to take him and his ship down. A battle commenced in the skies above the capital city, in which Fox reluctantly took out Pepper's flagship. Flagship crashed down, and Peppy, flying an R-wing, came in and saved General Pepper by flying into the flagship. 
Trevor was taken away by Cornelius' medical corps, and Starwolf left once more. After the Cornarian invasion had been repelled, Beltino informed Star Fox that the Aperoid homeworld had been located. He also told the team about the self-destruct program for the Aperoids that would set off a chain reaction in their apoptosis cells. Fired into the Aperoid Queen, this program could destroy all Aperoids. The program was not yet complete, however, and at that moment a large Aperoid armada appeared near Corneria once more, this time around the orbital gate which the Cornerian army was planning to use to reach the Aperoid homeworld. Star Fox, as well as the Corneria army and later Star Wolf, held off the Aperoids and successively more potent missiles at the gate, while the program was completed. The orbital gate then created a portal to the Aperoid homeworld, which the combined force of Star Fox, the Corneria army and Star Wolf entered. They engaged the Aperoids above their homeworld, a tunnel on the planet Latin side and to the Queen but it was shut by a shield when Aperoids didn't come out. As such, the hatchers maintaining the shield had to be taken out, but each was protected by a barrier. To deal with those, Fox entered the base containing the barrier generators and took each of them out after entering their respective buildings in a long battle. During this battle, 20% of the Cornarian fleet was destroyed and had to retreat. This left only Star Fox to enter the Aperoid homeworld after the hatchers were taken out and the shield finally dropped. A new shield was then formed from energy inside the planet, making it impossible to enter. However, Peppy piloted the Great Fox, which was being swarmed with Aperoids, into the shield and destroyed it momentarily. This allowed Star Fox and Star Wolf close behind to enter. The Great Fox was destroyed, although Peppy and Rolf64 survived in its separated bridge. The two mercenary teams flew through the tunnels in the Aperoid homeworld. Starwolf distracting the Aperoids so Starfox could reach the Queen. That being tried to break the resolve of the team by speaking to them through the voice of Pigma, Pepper, Peppy and even James, having obtained them from all the information she had absorbed through the Aperoids. A battle commenced, in which the Queen was severely weakened by Starfox. Fox then fired the self-destruct program at the Queen, but she suppressed it and flew away. Starfox followed her and Fox engaged her while also receiving aid from his team members. He eventually weakened the queen so much that the program started working, leading to the utter destruction of the entire Aperoid race. The Aperoid homeworld was also destroyed due to this, though Star Fox and Star Wolf made it out safely. Star Fox recovered the Great Fox's bridge, and the Cornerian fleet returned to the Lilat system after all missing personnel were accounted for. The Aperoid invasion had come to a close with this, and Star Fox was paid for its services using the money to construct a new Great Fox and to modify their R-Wings to fit their personal styles. Many planets in the Lilith system had also suffered considerable damage. The Cornarian capital had been decimated, so an interim government under military supervision was set up on the orbital gate to rule until the destruction level had been confirmed. The citizens of the cities also returned to residential blocks at this point, as those areas had suffered relatively light damage, and Soria Many had been able to survive by escaping into the forests, but resistance forces had been decimated, and many of the historical ruins on the planet had sustained heavy damage. In Vicina, the climate control center had been severely damaged. Repairments were necessary to the warning systems and ancillary equipment. Most military bases on Catina had suffered damage, and citizens remained mostly unharmed. Finally, damage on Fortuna was kept to a minimum, due to the Aperoid attack being concentrated in the northern forests. The Nomian base on the planet was also taken over by Corneria at this time. Other bases, like the Sargasso Space Zone, were supervised by them as well. The Anglor War In the years after the Aperoid invasion, the Lilith system returned to peace and its plans were rebuilt. The interim Cornerian government relinquished its power eventually, and the regular government was reinstated. At some point, Team Star Fox disbanded as well, as its members each went their separate ways. Fox and Rob64 remained aboard the new Great Fox, wandering the galaxy to tie up loose ends and to ponder about the rest of their lives. Peppy succeeded General Pepper as the leader of the Corneria army, as Pepper had fallen ill, likely due to being partially infected by the Aperoids. Falco went on to live as a loner once more, drifting from job to job. Slippy fell in love with a girl named Amanda and started a new life with her on Aquas. Crystal was forced out of the team by Fox, 
who loved her and thought the mercenary's life was too dangerous for her. This left her heartbroken, so she vanished, becoming a member of the Corneria army, staying close to General Peppy and Lucy. She also remained in touch with the Starwolf team, in particular Panther, the two had a bit of a romantic relationship. That team had also re-emerged since the destruction of the Aperoid homeworld, had continued its usual dirty dealings, causing large bounties to be placed on the heads of Wolf, Leon and Panther. They lurked on Fishina in this time. Pigma had also survived the destruction of the Aperoids. He now existed as a collection of four large cubes, each bearing part of his face, likely remnants of the being he had transformed into after being infected. He wandered around the various sectors of the Lilith system, only desiring revenge against Team Star Fox. About two years after the last battle, the Lilith system faced a new crisis. In the depths of the Venom Sea, a new race known as the Anglers had evolved, descended from fish Andros had experimented upon while he lived there. They had ships made of aluminium and small amounts of chrome, which made them impervious to the acid of the Venom Sea. The Anglers were led by the Angler Emperor and General Zazan, and had the same desires as their creator, to rule the Lilith system. As such, they launched devastating attacks on the rest of the system from Venom, with the Corneria army being helpless against them. The Angler forces possessed the hive mind that was controlled by central ships, which led assaults on enemy settlements. The generals Octoman and Zako led an attack on Aquas in the Octopod and Devil Shark. Zolch occupied Solar with a weapon called the Solar Satellite, and Andrew Oikoni, who had been asked by the Angler Emperor to work for them, attacked Vichina in the Death Crab. Katina was also attacked, with Bill leading the fight against them there on Corneria's side and Titania was occupied to make sure the device that could neutralize the Venom Sea would remain protected. The forces of the Anglers eventually made it to Corneria, after which Fox and Rob64 sprang into action. Because he was unable to face his former team, Fox opted to take on the Anglers alone. He fought against the Anglers in the mountains and seas of Corneria, managing to defeat some of them and stop the missiles they shot at the Great Fox. It became clear that the plan was needed as the battles went on however as Fox could not enter the caustic Venom Sea alone to take on the Anglers. After this point, the chronology of Star Fox branches into 9, due to different choices various people made during the rest of this war. The Angler Emperor In the first available route of Star Fox Command, Fox opted to contact Slippy. He asked him to help in his fight against the Anglers, and by joining forces, he managed to drive many of the Anglers from Corneria. After this was done, the Great Fox intercepted an emergency signal from Fishina to General Peppy that had been sent by Lucy. They thus went to Fishina and defeated some angler forces there. Star Wolf also appeared during these battles and engaged Star Fox, but was defeated. Lucy joined their team and together they fought against and defeated the forces led by Andrew as well as his Death Crab, liberating Fishina in the process. Lucy then chewed out Fox over what he had done to Crystal left for Corneria to go see her father. Team Star Fox meanwhile headed for Aquas at Slippy's request, to save Amanda from the Angler's attack. Slippy upgraded Fox Arrowing with the twin lasers too, and Falco, who had been fighting at Katina and Meteo, was also contacted. Once at Aquas, the trio managed to drive away the Anglers with Amanda's help. As this was happening, Crystal joined up with Star Wolf and convinced them to head to Venom by cutting through Sector X. They reached the Angler base in the Venom Sea and attacked it, but were scattered after their ships began to corrode. This prompted the Angler forces to scatter across the Lilat system and a large contingent of them to head to Corneria. This contingent was led by the Angler Emperor's massive arrowhead. The Corneria army, led by Peppy, encountered this fleet in Sector Z, after Star Fox finished his business on Aquas and asked them for the team's help. The team thus went to Sector Z where it encountered Crystal, who reluctantly helped to fight the Angler forces that had been waiting in ambush. They were defeated, and Fox and Crystal made up after talking things out. Meanwhile, the Angler Emperor and Zazan were waiting for the other forces to convene at Meteo. Team Star Fox arrived first, however, and managed to wipe out the Angler Emperor and his forces. Team Star Wolf arrived later and said farewell to Crystal, including Panther. Team Star Fox was together once more with this, and remained so for a few months. However, one day, Crystal confessed that she couldn't do this anymore, and went back to be with Panther and Star Wolf. Fox begged her not to go, but her mind was set, and so he remained alone. 
Crystal, meanwhile, became a tough pilot of the Starbolt team. Pygma's revenge. In an alternate scenario, Fox sent the Great Fox to seek out Falco after defeating some of the anglers on Corneria. The Great Fox just headed for Katina and Falco boarded it, with Fox fighting the anglers elsewhere. Falco then took out the angler forces on Katina with the help of the Cornerian forces led by Bill. After they were defeated, Rob64 intercepted the transmission of Crystal to Starwolf about heading to Venom. Falco decided to follow Starwolf to Meteo, but once he arrived, that team had already left for Sector X. Rob64 also found out that Fox was headed for Aquas. Falco first wanted to take out the anglers at Meteo. He did so with some help from Cat Monroe. A former colleague of Falco, who was smitten with him, who had fought in the Lilith Wars 11 years before. She left him and the battle though, as he was aloof and said he could have handled it by himself. Falco then decided to follow Starwolf because he was worried about Crystal, ignoring Rob's suggestion to meet up with Fox at Aquas. The Great Fox just headed to Sector X, where it encountered Pygma as part of a trap set up by Starwolf. Falco was baffled at his survival fought against him all the same. He was once more aided by Cat, who couldn't stand by and watch from the sidelines. Pygma was killed and afterwards, Falco received a message from Fox that he had defeated the Angler Emperor at Meteo. Slippy also announced that he was getting married with Amanda and that Crystal had made up with Fox. Falco decided that he could not show his face at the wedding reception after the rest of the team had won without him. Instead, he got a message from Cat and formed a new squad called Star Falco consisting of himself, Cat, and Dash Bowman, a Corneria army pilot and the grandson of Andros. This team went on to rival even Star Fox in the next years. The Curse of Pygma In an alternate scenario, Fox decided to attack the advanced angler guard on Corneria after defeating some of their forces on that planet. He also received a transmission from Slippy, but he was too busy with Amanda and his wedding plans to help in the fight. Fox thus continued to battle the anglers alone, but was helped by Dash. Dash then left, but Fox still needed more skilled pilots to take on the anglers. He decided to go to Fishina and ask Starwolf for help. Wolf decided to help after Fox defeated the three of them in combat, and they went to Solar to meet up with Falco. He did not show up however, and Wolf revealed at this time Panther's romance with Crystal. Wolf and Fox then defeated some angler force on Solar, though Fox could not keep his head clear due to the revelation about Crystal. Falco then arrived and got into a row with Wolf due to a force led by the solar satellite arriving. They thus took to battle and blindsided it, causing it to shoot into solar and drop into the lava. After its destruction, the team received a message from General Peppy. Slippy had gathered intelligence about the device Andros had developed and hidden on Titania, he had sent Dash to Titania to find the device and asked the team to meet him. They did so and explored the ruins Andros had hidden his device in, awakening the holographic Andros in the process. It sent the killer bee bioweapon after them, but Wolf stole it and went to Sector Y to meet up with the members of Star Wolf. The Great Fox pursued him, lost him in the sector. Instead, Pygma was encountered to pair Wolf's trap and subsequently defeated by the team. In the meantime, Starwolf had used the device of Andros to neutralize the Venom Sea and defeat the Anglos. General Peppy announced this victory to the entire Lilith system, with Wolf, Leon, Panther and Crystal taking full credit for the victory. Having lost everything due to this outcome, Fox and Falco retired to Papatoon. Fox soon lost himself, barely eating or sleeping, and Falco tried to comfort him, but to no avail. However, one idea he had worked. They retired as pilots and revolved their r wings into racing machines to enter the G0 Grand Prix, which excited Fox. The two became an excellent racing team and became household names across the galaxy as the years went by. Star Wolf Returns In various scenarios, Crystal managed to become the only occupant of the Great Fox and led it to Venom. Star Wolf also managed to obtain Andros' hidden device on Titania and rendezvous with the Great Fox at Venom which subsequently neutralized the Venom Sea. The forces under the sea were taken out by Starwolf and then the Angler Emperor's Arrowhead as well. The Anglers were devastated by this and Starwolf had ended the war, but Wolf felt bad due to having betrayed Fox to obtain Andros' device. The team headed back to Corneria, where they were hailed as heroes. The people of Lilith were not kind to Crystal, however, feeling that she was wrong to abandon Starfox. 
she ignored the talk at first, but as time went on, it became unbearable as the harassment became worse. She retired from Star Wolf and fled to another star system, becoming a bounty hunter. Years later, she ran into Fox during a job on the planet Q, and he did not recognize her. Slippy's Resolve In an alternate scenario, after Fox and Slippy liberated Corneria from the Angler forces, they decided to come to Peppy's aid after intercepting the message that was meant for him. They were unable to contact him however due to the anglers taking down the comms, so they went to fight the anglers. This culminated in the defeat of Zazan in his Zazanga 9, who had arrived on Corneria some time before. Peppy was located afterwards, and he had a discussion about where Falcon and Crystal had gone. Slippy got thinking about how he had lost contact with Amanda due to this conversation. Fox went to meet Falco at Meteo, while Slippy went to Aquas in the Great Fox to find Amanda. Aquas's planetary access routes had become overrun with the anglers, so Slippy went down alone to fight them. He met up with Amanda during this fight and afterwards, they met up at the Great Fox. Amanda turned up Rob64 because she did not like him, and Fox was not contacted either. Slippy and Amanda decided to focus on Aquas and intercepted a transmission from Octoman about Fox and Falco breaching Titania. The two then fought against and defeated Zako, liberating Aquas. They remained behind as Fox and Falco dealt with the anglers on Venom and got married. Slippy left behind Star Fox for good after this and eventually had many children with Amanda. As he grew old, Slippy would tell tales of Star Fox to his grown children and often thought back to his old friends in the team. Lucy and Crystal In an alternate scenario, after Fox, Slippy and Lucy had liberated Vishina by defeating Andrew, Lucy decided to go back to Corneria to find her father. She took the Great Fox while Fox and Slippy went off to Aquas and engaged the Anglers. She fought some of them and found Peppy, who was proud of her. Peppy then went to Titania and told Rob64 to tell Fox and his team to do the same. While Lucy stayed behind on Corneria, the anglers regrouped however and the Corneria army could not meet it in battle. Lucy was instead contacted by Crystal, Cat and Amanda, who worked together to take back Corneria once and for all. The anglers and their leading lieutenants were defeated on Corneria, after which Cat and Amanda properly introduced themselves to Lucy. They also received a transmission from Peppy, who informed them that Team Star Fox had destroyed the anglers on Venom. The ladies then went on to prepare a feast for Fox and his team, while also urging Crystal to settle her problems with Fox. A huge feast was held once Fox and his team returned, which lasted well into the night. Peppy and Lucy slipped away to reminisce about Vivian, while Crystal and Fox confessed their true feelings for each other. Crystal also decided to rejoin Team Star Fox at this point. Dash makes a choice. In an alternate scenario, after Fox, Falco and Wolf defeated the solar satellite at Solar, Wolf decided to leave the team. This left Fox and Falco to go to Titania, where they met up with Dash to retrieve Andros's device. They encountered the anglers here and the hologram of Andros, who sent the monarch Dodora bioweapon after them. These were all defeated and the device was obtained, after which the team went to Venom. Dash went along as well, on the condition that Fox and Falco would train him. Once at Venom, the Great Fox neutralized the Venom Sea, prompting the anglers to make their final stand. In that final battle, Fox, Falco and Dash were aided by the ghost of James McCloud, who had appeared for the first time since the Lilith Wars, but only to Fox. The anglers were eventually defeated, and Fox and Falco returned to Corneria. Dash decided to remain behind on Venom, to protect the planet his grandfather had wanted to give new life. He started to make the planet a hospitable place to live via terraforming, and after years, immigrants began to arrive to the lush and green world. Dash became the planet's leader, and soon, Venom began to equal Corneria in terms of environment and science. The planet became the heart of an empire ruled by Dash, who over the years had come to resemble his grandfather. He wanted to usurp Corneria as the center of Lilith's power, and told his people as much in a rousing speech. A few weeks later, a small conflict sparked war, with Venom once again threatening the Lilith system. Fox and Crystal In various scenarios, Fox, Falco and Slippy ended up at Titania to seek out Crystal. She informed the team about Andros's device, which was called to Fox. She also aided the team in defeating the Anglers and the Doomworm by a weapon of Andros. After the battle, Slippy urged Crystal to be nicer to Fox, but it helped only a little. 
The Great Fox then headed for Venom and neutralized its seas. The reunited team Star Fox fought against the Angler forces under the sea and defeated the Angler Emperor, ending the war against them. Fox and Crystal made up in the aftermath, even though Crystal was initially not planning to do so. After this, the Great Fox headed for Aquas to meet Amanda. She decided to join Team Star Fox as well and fly alongside Slippy. Venom had also changed due to these events, becoming a planet with non-acidic oceans that could harbor life. Dash was appointed to be the planet's steward and strove to build a new empire on Venom, with himself at its pinnacle as well. Goodbye, Fox. In a final scenario, after Lucy located Peppy on Forneria, Peppy took the Great Fox to Titania to meet up with Fox, Falco and Slippy. The old Star Fox team had reunited at last. They took out the anglers on the planet and the Grunner bioweapon of Andros to obtain the mad scientist's device. With the end of the war in sight, Fox decided that after the war, he would retire and settle down with Crystal. Team Star Fox then headed to Venom and neutralized the Venom Sea before taking out the Angler Emperor. He was defeated, ending the war, and Fox remained true to his word. Rob64 had managed to locate Crystal on Soria, and Fox went there to meet her. Star Fox was formally disbanded for good, and Fox settled down for a quiet life with Crystal. Eventually, they had a son named Marcus. He entered the Cornarian Academy when he came of age to become a fighter pilot like his father, and proved to be quite skilled. Eventually, Marcus founded a new Star Fox team, consisting of himself, Falco, Slippy's son, and Peppy's granddaughter, presumably the daughter of Lucy. This team would go on to defend peace wherever it was threatened. This is where the continuity that started originally with Star Fox 64 ends. At this point in time, it remains doubtful that it will be continued, as the series has been rebooted with Star Fox Zero, a retelling of the Lilith Wars. This game is not a remake that replaces Star Fox 64 3D in this timeline either, bear the words of Shigeru Miyamoto. There were comments that if this continuity were to continue one day, it would likely go on from the middle of Star Fox Command, likely ditching the various endings given by Command itself, or following just one of them. As it stands now, the continuity seems to have concluded for good however. I hope you enjoyed this extensive look at the Star Fox 64 continuity, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!